in an oxidative cleavage reaction of an alkene, both bonds of the carbon-carbon double bond are broken, and carbonyl groups are established at those carbons. The example shown here shows the establishment of two carboxylic acids from an alkene in which there are hydrogens at both carbons of the alkene. The substitution pattern of the alkene dictates the exact reaction outcome here, and we'll look at various examples in this video. The reagents used to accomplish oxidative cleavage are universally very high oxidation state transition metal compounds. For example, permengene, now under basic conditions at high temperatures, reacts with alkenes to form carboxylic acids. This is an extreme example of oxidation since we're replacing three bonds to carbon or hydrogen at each of the alkene carbons with three bonds to oxygen in the products. As in 1,2-dihydroxylation, the key intermediate here is also a manganate ester. However, the hot reaction conditions encourage a different path rather than substitution of each of the carbon-oxygen bonds with hydroxide. In fact, we can understand what happens here by thinking back to previous discussions about substitution and elimination. At high temperatures, rather than substitution, hydroxide engages in elimination in the manganate ester. This elementary step and further steps like this establish the double bonds and ultimately the OH groups at the carbons of the alkene. Unsubstituted alkene carbons, for example in which R1 or R2 is a hydrogen atom, such as we see at this carbon in this alkene substrate, form carbon dioxide under these conditions. Both hydrogens in this CH2 group can be eliminated to form two double bonds to oxygen. Disubstituted alkene carbons, CR2, are oxidized to ketones. These can't form carboxylic acids because that would require the breaking of a carbon-carbon bond. For example, here we have a tetrasubstituted alkene with four R groups attached to the carbons of the double bond, and what we find is that R1 and R2 end up in one of the ketones, while R3 and R4, which are both linked to a common carbon in the alkene starting material, end up in the other ketone. It's essentially as if two oxygen atoms have jammed their way between the carbons of the alkene, forming two new carbon-oxygen double bonds. One final point to mention about this reaction that makes it a little bit easier to recall and to use is that a different set of reaction conditions can accomplish the same transformation using fewer reagents. Osmium tetroxide, or OSO4, is analogous to potassium permanganate in that it contains osmium in a very high oxidation state, here plus 8. Osmium tetroxide is capable of this kind of oxidative cleavage, but osmium is a very toxic and unfriendly reagent, so typically it's only used in a catalytic amount with a co-oxidant that's present in stoichiometric amount. And the co-oxidant here is known as oxone, or potassium peroxymonosulfate. One thing I want to point out about this peroxymonosulfate anion is that the 5 here is deliberate. This is essentially a per-sulfuric acid with two oxygens linked to each other before they reach the sulfur. Here's a detailed Lewis structure of this HSO5- anion that comes along with potassium in oxone. And as we've seen for per-carboxylic acids already, it's this oxygen that is really the electrophilic oxygen here that engages in oxidation. 